have a nice time in this video let us prove rank nullity theorem let t be a linear transformation of u into v if u has finite dimension then rank of t plus nullity of t equal to dimension of u so here u and v are two vector spaces and t of u represents set of all elements in v which are images of the elements of u and rank of t means the dimension of t of u you know the result if you take the range set it is a subspace of v so it should have a basis and the number of elements in the basis is the dimension of t of u and rank of t is defined as the dimension of t of u and what do you mean by nullity of a linear transformation here again t is a linear transformation from u to v set of all elements in u which are mapped to the zero element in v is called the kernel of the set u and kernel is a subspace of u and the dimension of the kernel that is number of elements in the basis of the kernel is called the nullity of t and the result says that rank of t plus nullity of t equal to dimension of u that is a number of elements in the basis of u to prove rank nullity theorem we use this result if t is a linear transformation of u into v and a equal to set u1 u2 etc u1 is a basis of u then t of a spans t of u here a is a set u1 u2 etc u1 and it is given that this is a basis of u and you have here t of a and it is a subset of t of u t of u means all the elements in the image set under t okay so the result is this t of a spans t of u so using the elements of t of a you can write any element of t of u as a linear combination okay so let us prove the theorem rank nullity theorem and rank nullity theorem says that if t is a linear transformation from u to v then rank of t plus nullity of t equal to dimension of u so suppose u has dimension n then we have to prove that rank of t plus nullity of t equal to n and again we assume that set u1 u2 etc uk is a basis of kernel of t you have kernel of t means set of all elements in u which are mapped to the zero element in v okay and you are taking the elements u1 u2 etc uk as a basis of the kernel and we use the result that if you have a linearly independent set in the set u in the vector space u you can extend this set to a basis of u here u1 u2 etc uk is a basis of kernel of t and it is a subset of u again and this set is linearly independent so adding some more elements in u you can make a basis of u and let the basis of u be u1 u2 etc uk then uk plus 1 uk plus 2 etc um i stated is here n because we assumed that dimension of u is n so in any basis of u it should contain n elements so we take a basis of kernel here it is u1 u2 etc uk again we add some more elements to make the base of u so all together in the base of u it contains k elements so we have to prove that rank of t plus nullity of t equal to m here nullity we already assumed that it is k because we assumed that u1 u2 etc uk is the basis of the kernel so the kernel basis of the kernel contains k elements is our assumption so we assumed that the nullity is k also we know the dimension of u is n so we had to prove that this rank of t is equal to n minus k then we will have n minus k plus k equal to n now our aim is to prove that n minus k is equal to the rank of the transformation that is i have to find a basis of t of u containing n minus k elements here you have u1 u2 etc uk which belongs to the um, kernel then we take some other elements in u uk plus 1 etc un to make the base of u together with these elements 
and if here there is an element u plus k plus 1 correspondingly here there will be an element u t of u k plus 1 similarly there will be an element t of u k plus 2 etc there is an element t of u m corresponding to each of the elements here there will be the corresponding image so we are taking exactly the elements t of u k plus 1 t of u k plus 2 etc t of u m now consider this set how many elements are there it starts with u k plus 1 and ends with u n so here number of elements is n minus k so altogether in this set there are n minus k elements we want to show that t of u contains a has a basis containing n minus k elements here we will prove that the set t of u k plus 1 etc t of u n is a basis of t of u then our proof is complete for that consider the set t of u1 t of u2 etc t of u k etc t of u n this set spans t of u because we know u1 u2 etc u k u k plus 1 etc u n is a basis of u since it is a basis of u it spans u if there is a spanning set of u then t of that set will spans t of u so we have t of u1 etc t of u n spans t of u but you know t of u1 t of u2 etc t of uk are all zeros because these are elements of the kernel so all these elements are mapped to the zero element in b so all these elements are actually zeros so what happens the remaining elements t of u k plus 1 t of u k plus 2 etc t of u n spans t of u now we have to show that this set is a basis of t of u now we proved that it spans t of u now it is enough to show that the set is linearly independent if the set is linearly independent also it spans t of u then it is a basis of t of u we already proved that the set spans t of u it is enough to prove that it is linearly independent how can we show that a set is linearly independent so we consider such a linear relation some constant into t of u k plus 1 plus another constant into t of u k plus 2 plus etc plus a constant into t of u n equal to 0. So I name the constants as c k plus 1, c k plus 2 etc c n. Okay? I have to show that this co constants are all zeros, coefficients are all zeros. Okay? Since t is a linear transformation, I can make it as t of c k plus 1, u k plus 1 plus etc plus c n u n equal to 0. So what is the meaning of this expression? t of something equal to 0 that means that this element belongs to the kernel of t because kernel of t contains all the elements in u which are mapped to 0 under t okay so here t of this element equal to 0 means this element belongs to the kernel of t now we know u1 u2 etc uk is a basis of this kernel Therefore, any element in the kernel can be expressed as a linear combination of the basis elements. So, there exists some constants C1, C2, etc., CK such that this element, this one element equal to a linear combination of U1, U2, etc., UK. That is C1, U1 plus etc. plus CK, UK. This element belongs to the kernel. So, I can express this element as a linear combination of the basis elements of the kernel. Now we take all the elements to the left hand side then we will get an expression like this. Now you may see that this linear relation contains u1, u2, etc, un together with some constants and linear relationship equal to 0. Okay? That means that all these constants are zeros because we know u1, u2, etc, uk, etc, un it is a basis of u that was our first assumption. Since it is a basis of u, it is linearly independent. So, if you have a relation like this, all the coefficients must be equal to 0. Therefore, we have c1 equal to c2 equal to etc. ck equal to ck plus 1 etc. equal to cn equal to 0. So, we proved that the constants ck plus 1 to cn are all zeros. So, from this expression, we can conclude that t of u k plus 1 etc. t of u n is linearly independent. And we already proved that it spans T of U. Therefore, it is linearly independent. Also, it spans T of U. Therefore, it is a basis of T of U. And it contains N minus K elements. Therefore, dimension of T of U equal to N minus K. 
therefore rank of t equal to n minus k and by our assumption dimension of u is n and nullity of t is k so we have rank of t plus nullity of t equal to dimension of u so in this way we can prove rank nullity theorem